Once upon a time, a Soviet war helicopter entered Allied territory. The aircraft was intercepted and shot down. As the pilot emerged from the wreckage, he was arrested by the same bastards who shot him down, then later was brought to a military base for interrogation. That pilot was me. Name? My name is Fox. Jesse Fox. You don't seem to be Russian. Russian? Me? You were piloting a Russian aircraft two hours ago. I also drive a Toyota, and I'm not Japanese. All right, Mr. Fox. Before arresting you, I'm obligated to write down a report with your version of the facts. So tell us what the hell you were doing in that heavily armed Soviet helicopter. It's a long story. Sergeant, bring us some coffee. Yes, sir. Wachowski, bring the lieutenant some coffee. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Fox, we have plenty of time. Explain what happened. In 1972, a crack commando unit threw me in a prison for a crime I didn't commit. You're under arrest for a crime you didn't commit! I promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the underground, trying to survive from these soldiers of fortune. Let's start from the beginning. How did you escape from that cell? Piece of cake. I just had to write a note. A note? Where'd you get the paper from? I used toilet paper. I see. And how did you find a pen? A pen? I was in a dirty, grimy cell, not in an office. I wrote the note with a rusty wire, using my own blood as ink. I scratched my arm with the wire and got to work. It wasn't easy. The toilet paper tore under the pressure of the bloody wire. Those bastards gave us cheap paper. One ply, unscented, and unpatterned. Why did you break the toilet? Why not grab the paper like a normal person? You know how prison is. It's kill or be killed. And I wasn't going to be killed by some dirty toilet. Hey, you moron! Holy Jesus! You schmuck, do you really think I'd be stupid enough to kill myself? Kill myself? Ugh. left the guard locked in the cell. Then I threw away the key and got out of there. Mr. Fox, what about the noose? Where did you get that from? Where did I get the noose? Are you seriously asking me that? I am, Mr. Fox. I'll tell you later. When leaving the cell, I found myself in a prison yard surrounded by some buildings. There were piles of boxes and other stuff here and there. And the ground was plain dirt. Oh, and it was night. That box contained some filthy cloth scraps. I made some handy bandages to prepare for when I would get wounded. Bad news, dirty cloth rags don't heal you. They just stop the bleeding, and I ain't got time to bleed. Good news, I could reuse these rags as much as I wanted. Good dirty cloth is hard to come by. I thought everyone would be asleep at night that it was safe to escape. I was dead wrong. I noticed the presence of one guard on the night shift. Thank <laughs> you. 
I need to pee. some crates, I found my salvation. A sewer hole. There was no ladder and I couldn't see the bottom. I needed to find a ladder or rope if I wanted to go down. Hello? You talking to me? Affirmative. My name is Colonel Alan Harris, 5th Battalion. I'm Jesse Fox. Right? I'm not military, Colonel. Then tell me, Fox, what the hell are you doing here? I've been jailed for a crime I didn't commit. Do you know how to get out of here? Try to escape through any sewer. There must be one nearby, because it stinks when it's hot. Once outside, move along at nighttime and sleep during the day. What about you, Colonel? I've been tortured. My legs won't make it. But if you bring me a radio, I can help you escape. Hold on, Harris, are you sure you heard him say Alan Harris? Yes, sir. Saw him yesterday. Look, Mr. Fox, Colonel Harris died a month ago in an ambush. Well, it's the name that stubborn old man gave me. I see. I'll write down on the report that you talked to Colonel Harris after his death. Continue your story. As I was saying, I searched for a radio to bring him. took a coin off the guard. Money? What'd you intend to spend it on? I suspect there's no shops open for an escapee on a midnight run. Who said anything about spending? I used it to distract soldiers. I quickly found out that guards love picking up free coins off the ground. I heard something. I picked up the guard's radio. Without encryption, I knew other guards could listen in on my conversations with Harris. I see. You still haven't told me how you got that noose. I'll tell you later. As I was saying, I needed to find a special encryption circuit to install in the radio. I had the circuit. I just had to attach it to the radio. modified radio, I could speak to Harris with no one listening. Now, I just had to bring it to him. And the noose? Later. Here you are, Colonel. A radio. I've modified it to encrypt the signal. Oh, good job, son. Do you have another one for you? Not yet. I'll call you through Channel 1 as soon as I find another. Good luck, son. And Godspeed.
Why did you keep punching those crates? What did you expect to happen? Nothing in particular. Then why this gratuitous violence? I don't know. I suppose I got lost in the moment. You know, for being imprisoned for a crime I didn't commit. I heard something. <laughs> You stole a one-eyed man's patch? A one-eyed man that would shoot me without hesitation. Because it was his job, what you did was macabre and suggest you might have a fetish. Holy Jesus. Well, that patch turned out to be handy to create a lethal weapon. You removed his glass eye too? Yes. I took it out of his eye socket to chill out. To chill out? Pulling out glass eyes relaxes you? I'm not a sadist. I didn't enjoy pulling it out, but it helped when I rolled it around in my mouth like candy. I was under a lot of pressure. Too much stress and I'd end up making a mistake. Hey, buddy, I have no paper. Can you bring me some? Here you are. Thanks, man. You saved my ass, literally. You broke down the door and attacked a guard while he was on the toilet? Yes. I beat the shit out of him. Is that a joke? No. I literally beat the shit out of him. That toilet paper wasn't unscented anymore. Let's move on. heard something. I ran into a guard as I went in. Luckily, the guy was sleeping. That bastard was going to have a rude awakening. Heard something. With those first aid kits, I could disinfect and heal my wounds. Good news, those kits stopped any bleeding and also healed my wounds over time. Bad news, once you use them, they were gone.
Hey, Mike, can you tell them again? Of course. The Sarge says to the soldier, someone sent you a blank letter. The soldier says, it's from my wife, Sergeant. How do you know that, soldier? Because we argued and we don't talk to each other. The lethal weapon you created with the patch was a slingshot? Sort of childish, don't you think? What were you gonna shoot? Pebbles? Depleted uranium balls. Three shots and goodbye guard. I reached a special place where I found something. What, Mr. Fox? It was... what was it? Damn, I can't remember. With the radio encrypted, I could talk to Harris. I wouldn't have been able to escape without his help. I hate to admit it, but the grumpy old man gave some good advice. Colonel, do you copy? Copy. I found a rope to go down the sewer. And you're not down yet? What the hell are you waiting for? I'm on it, Colonel. Oh, yeah, now I remember. It was that damn grenade guy. I wanted to punch the hell out of him, but I couldn't reach him. Why couldn't you reach him? There was a ditch. A simple ditch stopped you? This was no mere simple ditch. It was full of tentacles and blood-stained spears that moved up and down, and bony arms that tried to grab me, and deadly legs. Okay, okay, Mr. Fox. I get it. You couldn't reach him. For your own good, I'll not include the spears, arms, and tentacles in my report. Now, Mr. Fox, please continue your story. All right. The fight began as he tossed the first grenade at me. Boss defeated. I searched the grenade guy. Wait, wasn't there a ditch? I used the bridge. What bridge? But you told me you couldn't cross the ditch. Because I didn't see it at first. I was completely focused on my opponent, the grenade guy. I see.
couldn't see the bottom of that hole, but I anchored the rope and I went down.